This is MTN's 5G modem and I've had it for over 20 days. I've tested it and I've used it to download a 2GB game in less than 2 minutes. I've gotten speeds over 1000 Mbps and I have been streaming 4K seamlessly and gaming faster than I've ever done in Nigeria at least. There's been a lot of discussion about the MTN 5G router but what is it like to live with this for almost a month? In this video, I'll be sharing my full thoughts on this router and if it's worth spending your hard-earned 15,000 naira to pre-order it. If you're new here, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back, do hit that like button so more people can benefit from the knowledge we're about to share in this video. Alright, you know what comes next, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so what's inside this box and how do I set it up? Inside the box, the first thing we get is the modem, of course. I've got this in white, but you can get it in two other colors, which are yellow and black. The rare part of the router has a lot of ports and a button. From the top, we've got this WPS button where you press and hold to activate WPS. You have two TS9 external antenna ports with a range of up to 4200 MHz. You've got a telephone port, two LAN ports in case you want to connect it to a PC, and you're actually supplied with a LAN cable out of the box and lastly the power port. Underneath the modem is where we have the slot where your nano sim card goes into. You need a valid nano sim card to be inserted underneath the modem. You also have to register at MTN's office. The reset hole is where you simply put a needle or pin in there and you reset your modem to factory settings and a USB-C port which doesn't work for data storage. The text there also labels it as an input for 12 volt or 1.5 amp. We plug the power bank in here and it didn't charge. We also plugged it into a computer. It didn't show up as storage. So we kind of think it's for firmware updates. Then to the right side of it is where we've got the other details like the router name and password. The front of the modem is where we get three signal bars. Of course, it's low, medium and high. And if this network signal is red, it means that the SIM isn't inside or it's not registered on the network or there's just no network at all. It turns blue if it's on a 4G network and white if it's 5G. When the Wi-Fi light is on, it's turned on. When it's blinking, it's WPS and when it's off, of course, Wi-Fi is off. And the last light below is the power indicator which shows uh, when the modem is turned on or when it's turned off. Basically, if everything is all white, you're good to go. We also get the power adapter for the modem, the manual and the nano SIM pack which we already took the SIM from and is inside the modem. The modem doesn't have an inbuilt battery so you will have to rely on a stable power supply. One thing MTN did with the Highness Flex was provide this power bank and I tested it with my 5G modem. It lasted up to 9 hours and 30 minutes and I think that was a brilliant move by MTN. The power bank actually connects to the normal power from this point and then to the modem from this other point here so it acts like an inverter and then it lasts long when there is no power. I do hope that they consider it for this 5G router but that might make the cost a bit higher maybe. Anyway, this is how the router looks all around. It's got MTN branding on it with 5G and it's also got what looks like vents on it. I did check and it's a ZTE router which debuted in South Africa of course with MTN and that's everything everything we get in the box. Now let's move straight into the tests. I'll limit this to speed test, millisecond test or ping for gaming and then downloading a file. For my 5G test, I actually tested it in three different locations in Lagos. I tested it in Ekoi and that was where I was getting around 800 to 1000 Mbps. In Victoria Island, you know, ShopRite Palms, I was getting 500 to 700 Mbps and in Lekki Phase 1, I was reaching 700 to 850 Mbps. This is in comparison to 4G speeds which wouldn't hit these numbers on a Good day. 4G barely hits 100 Mbps. Um, so this is really 10 times faster. These speeds don't apply to everyone everywhere all the time, of course, and it won't be the same in all the locations. But the speeds were interesting to see. Of course, another thing is that at night, your speed will be much, much faster. And all my tests were done during the day. So there you have it. I tested this 5G router in a location without 5G, and I got much better speeds than I would normally get on a 4G connection. In general, I noticed that my 4G speeds got faster and for some reason, many people believe that MTN reduced the 4G speed because they wanted to launch 5G and you just hear from the CMO. No, uh, the 5G network rollout does not directly and negatively impact the 4G network. I mean, it doesn't really make much sense to them to reduce something like that. Like, why would they want to do something like that? One of the questions I got a lot was about gaming and the millisecond time, the MS time. A good time is like, 20 milliseconds and under. Between 20 and 50 ms is good for gaming and is the most common for gamers. 50 to 100 ms is fair and you may experience some lag. 
100 to 300 ms might give you a few instances of lagging but anything above 300 ms is not good for gaming. If you look at the top of the speed test, you can see a measurement for ping and if you are playing COD, you should see that number just at the edge of your screen. It looks like this. You will see that it's within the fair range. Now when I took it to Ikoyi, my test read as low as 19 ms which is fantastic. For PC gamers, one good way to get a good millisecond time and smooth gaming experience with this router is to actually use the ethernet cable that was included. This way you don't lose packet data, your connection is faster and stronger and of course you can close all the apps running in the background so that your game would be fast. For my download speed, here's something I noticed. As I mentioned, I downloaded a 2GB game on the Play Store called Order and Chaos in around 2 minutes. I also uploaded this 3.56GB video up on YouTube and in 8 minutes, it got to 50% and in 16 minutes and 15 seconds, it got to 100%, which is 3 times better than what I'm already used to. Okay, so how do I get the 5G modem? This 5G modem is quite easy to get. For convenience, the page to get it is in the first link in the description of this video you're currently watching. Once you get on the page, I do recommend that you sign up to use the website. Clicking on this text here lets you quickly view the 5G coverage locations, either by scrolling through it or by searching and finding your own location. You can select the color you want between white, yellow, and black. And you can see all the sides of this modem. You then select how many you want, and then you make sure you check out the terms Terms and conditions. It basically says that pickup starts on the 19th of September on a first come first serve basis and you should get a notification once it's ready to pick up. Once the device is in your cart, select exactly the store that is closest to you where you can pick it up from. You can also see the phone number and full address of that store. Once you select the store and fill out your details, you can then proceed to pay. You can pay either through your card, USSD, QR or transfer. Once this is done, you should get an email with a confirmation number and that's what you're going to present when you're about to collect your modem. Do note that MCM is also giving people 100 gigabytes as a pre-order bonus, which is nice to see. To activate this, I'd recommend putting your 5G SIM into your phone and tapping the code that they give you. That's what I did and I got 100 gigabytes. By the way, you can connect up to 32 devices to this 5G router, which is quite a lot. MTN CMO also mentions in an interview that there will be a router exchange program. We're going to have a, uh, a router exchange plan coming up soon. Um, I don't have a date yet, but it's going to happen this year, later this year. So you can bring your older modem, something like um, the Hynet Flex modem, and then you receive a 5G one, probably at a discounted rate, but I can't confirm 100%, but that is cool to know. So beyond MTN's website now, how do you actually know which location has 5G coverage? Well, one simple method I discovered thanks to the help of my friend, Stanley, was speedtest.net. In the fourth tab, you can see the map section, either on your iPhone or your Android, and you can see all the 5G coverage areas in blue. And for the other colors, you can see 4G in cyan, and 2G and 3G and so on and so forth. You can just check the map and see which location has 5G. I made a more detailed short video where you can see how this works and I'll link it in the description. It's on Instagram. You can also follow me on there. So what phones can connect to 5G and do you need a new 5G SIM card? No, you don't need a new 5G SIM card. If you've got a 4G SIM, you're good to go if you have a 5G smartphone. And if you don't have a 5G smartphone, you can actually get this modem. That's what this modem is for, so that you kind of experience 5G without having a 5G phone. Right now, the phones that can access 5G are limited to some Nokia phones, Xiaomi and Techno phones that are capable of doing 5G stuff. Samsung users have reported 5G on their phones, but not all of them. MTN says 5G will roll out to others soon. iPhone and Samsung users might have to wait for a bit, but yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be rolling out to people more and more over the coming days and weeks. As someone who deals with heavy files, I use a large camera to shoot and the file sizes are like hundreds of gigabytes. So this is a blessing because I can deal with large file sizes and I can transfer it to someone if I need to transfer it. Think of the media industry that booms because now you are not limited by internet speeds in Nigeria. People in Nigeria get to connect to the world on sort of a level playing field. Think of gaming and esports in Nigeria as something that we're now considering and paying more attention to. Developers and creators can compete in, you know, in the world of remote work. And those are all amazing things to think about. While all these things are great to hear, one thing that's on everyone's mind is how much will this amazingness cost? Well, it will certainly be high. 
For my tests across four different locations, three locations with 5G, one without 5G, I actually spent almost 70 gigabytes to test it because I ran this test like over 50 times. The other thing to note is that there won't be unlimited data plans, which is kind of a bummer. This is mainly due to the cost of this infrastructure. You can think of it like um, leaving a tap turned on and the water is running while it's not being used. It's a waste, especially financially. MTN mentions that your existing data plans will work with 5G and they won't be charging more per megabyte compared to 4G. And they're pushing for people to buy larger data plans and sort of use them responsibly. But again, what are your thoughts? Would you be getting a 5G router? Do you have a 5G enabled smartphone? Do you have any questions at all? Please leave them in the comment section below and I'll be right there chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the very next video.